the site is quite good. But uh, on cash points, we want bigger advertising boards. And so maybe the fact that it is stable and hasn't crashed is the fact that uh, people don't know that Linux is running in the background. So that's some proof for that anyway. Um, now I believe the next topic is another one that's probably a little bit positive. So I don't know which direction you're going to take this anyway. Um, and it has on my little list here, Mozilla versions. So, Roy, I'm going to throw it over to you. Let's see what you've got, sir. Yeah, well, you know Firefox version 8? Have you heard about that? No, I pay very little attention to Firefox. Yeah, it's, it's getting a bit confusing now with the versions. I mean, I pretty much know on the verge of basically stop, stopping to use Firefox. Uh, haven't used it for the past eight years. Um, and the reason, the reason is the thing with the versions, it's cause, it's, it's, for me at least, it's been causing some issues with plugins basically. Uh, and also the updates. Uh, so I used to defend the fact that they were just changing the numbers and it shouldn't cause too much issues. Uh, you could think of it as 4.1 and 4.2 instead of thinking of Firefox uh, 6, 7, and 8, which are mentioned in the news now. People will give you some assessments of uh, something called Firefox 8, even though we're still in Firefox 5 as far as the what's available in stable mode is is, uh, is out there. So it is becoming very confusing. It's it's just it's just a marketing thing, to, 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 in my opinion. But uh, personally speaking for myself, the plugin situation has been quite horrible to me, and I spent many hours just struggling against the uh, you know plugins that don't work and things that won't prevent you know will prevent parts of Firefox from working correctly. So I just went back to Conqueror now, and I'm pretty happy with that. Um, the Yes, yeah, so, so the thing with the versions, uh, I know some people were spreading thud about it and saying, well, it's not going to work well for corporations and they should be able to upgrade to it. So I still see that as an exaggerated uh, risk because, of course, they don't have to upgrade. They could stay with 3.6 for the time being. I think the only one being phased out in terms of support is, is 3.5. And the difference between 3.5 and 4 and 5 and 6 and 7 and 8, I think it's very small compared to what we've seen before. So they could just stay with 3.6, and if anybody is using Firefox and hasn't uh, upgraded to 4 and 5, and just I, my advice would be just to stay with what's working right now and wait until it matures and people actually uh, upgrade their plugin at least to formally uh, write in text file or anything that's compatible with the new version, which is basically a almost a non-upgrade. It's just it should be compatible. It's just it's just that there is a text file or there is a place where you stated the, the range of compatible versions and I think Firefox is losing control of some of the developers and they don't, don't, don't really want to update their software so often to just write this is compatible with version 5 and 6 and 7 and 8 and just release it just for you know version bumps and compatibility like that. A uh, bit of an issue from my point of view. Um, but I know you don't use Firefox, so it's that free of much. And I don't use plugins either, so uh, even when I was using Firefox. Um, so moving on to the next topic, and it's another one that's uh, not of uh, particular relevance to myself, but certainly I know Roy is a, um, a keen, uh, keen user of KDE 4.7, uh, the release mm, candidate. And I think well, but, uh, 4.7 is supposed to be released pretty soon. I think it's 27th of July is the date. That they have put down for it, and uh, you know, Kubuntu. When the second alpha of Kubuntu was supposed to come uh, for the next version, which is uh, 11.10, uh, the next version was supposed to come out in in form in the form of second release candidate. It didn't actually come out, and people started to ask the question: uh, Is Canonical trying to push aside KDE and just concentrate on Unity? Uh, and then there was an explanation from Harold Cedar in the mailing lists, and they basically tried to integrate the latest KDE, which hasn't been released yet, into the version of Kubuntu, which would be released in, in October. So this is the reason they have some delays. And as far as I can tell, KDE 4.7 is pretty polished, uh, and it doesn't have many new features, but it does have a few new things, and things are supposed to work better. One of one of the things I've been seeing developed now is all the different modes with Plasma, and they, they try to make it adaptable to more devices. And one of the things they have is a media player based on uh, based on Plasma, so you could actually add a sort of a widget. It's actually a uh, video player, uh, things like that. And it's always fun to watch, but if you're not a KDE user, maybe you 
you're not quite so sure what I'm talking about. Well, it, it, it does worry me um, with, with things like these these widgets I mentioned. Now, I don't use KDE, but it seems to me that there's a lot of talk about eye candy and bells and whistles, and we saw where that led when we, we look at the transition from XP to Vista, and these bells and whistles are, are very fancy and very nice, but invariably they can cause further issues. Um, the other thing that concerns me, Roy, was that when you're talking about KDE, you mentioned words to the effect of um, it, it should be getting better, or also uh, words that effectively well and it should more things should work now we're at a stage it's, very, it's very similar to the previous version but that's because it's kda4 so each one of the numbers there are supposed to be a sign of maturity so you could think of it as if you think about windows you could think of our of serve you know service back or something like that it's just it's really improvements to the existing framework of things but, I mean, I think that's fair to say over the over the past few years, KD has on occasion had a bit of a rocky history. And in the modern day, where we have uh, desktop uh, desktop Linux, we have a plethora of operating systems and platforms on mobile phones, different form factors, whatever. Uh, getting better next time just won't cut it anymore. It's certainly a criticism that I've leveled at Microsoft very often when their products have failed me, and it would be un very unfair for me to say that uh, it's, a, it's it's not okay for Microsoft to have products that well, will be better next it's time. Not entirely true because every time they release a new version of Windows, they say this one is better than mm. the previous one. So I mean, it depends how you uh, perceive what I'm saying about KDE. Yeah. Thing. I'm using 4.4 at the moment to do the uh, show and stuff. And then that's that's an old version, but it's, it works fine for me. I've used 4.5 on that, my computer at work and stuff, but that works too. When I use GNOME, and I can't put my hand on my heart and say there's ever been a time when I've come across a feature or something that needed to be better next time. It, functions exactly how I want it to function. It hasn't let me down. If it has, if something has let me down, it's invariably not the fault of GNOME. It's some third-party app or me messing about with my system uh, frivolously. Um, but I've never had that experience with GNOME where I've said, oh, well, it's, it's, it's not quite there yet, or it, it will be better next time. And for well, me, that's unacceptable. Yeah. Uh, well, who, who said that about KDE uh, now? I'm, I'm just looking back at KDE. I think it's KDE, KDE 4.0. I, I hear similar complaints now about GNOME 3.0. Zero. And I think the next version is going to be 3.2, and lots of previews being published about what's going to be in it, and it's going to be just basically better than 3.0, or that's what they say, well, which is what you'd expect. So. Well, I won't be going to 3 at all. Um, I'll be moving away from uh, uh, probably XFC or something along those lines. Um, but I certainly won't be going to go into 3 because I don't like it. Um, but no, it was just an observation I've made. It seems KD in particular. It has been, it has had a rocky, rocky history uh, over the years of different versions. Like I say, I can't be too critical of it because I haven't taken an active interest in it. I've tried it, I've tried it on numerous occasions, and every single time I found something not to like about it. And so I've never been of the mindset where I would be looking forward to the late, latest key, KDE release candidate. Um, but for me, like I say, again, I can say now say the same for GNOME, and I certainly won't be migrating to version three at all, um, and I'll be looking elsewhere. So. Moving on. Um, Maybe we should go for a track first. Yeah. Well, what I was going to suggest was this. Um, we've only got two very quick topics which aren't scheduled on the list, and they're very, very quick ones. What I suggest, because you've got kindly provided all the music tonight, Roy, I'll um, do my quick topics, then I'll throw it over to you for your final words. You can take my Jerry Springer uh, slot at the end, and then you can, um, you can introduce the last track, and we'll do it like that, if mm -hmm. you're in agreement. Right, the first piece of news I've got is really probably a bit, bit silly. Um, Roy, you might have a comment on it, you might not, but you might, I've got to be fair because you might not even read this one yet. Um, it's a rumour and it's coming from reghardware.com and it says that um, domain name claim teases Sony Microsoft partnership and I'll read the first couple of lines from the site, the link will be in the show notes. Microsoft has allegedly registered MicrosoftSony.com as well as SonyMicrosoft.com in a move that can mean the two giants are about to go into business together. And then the the article formulates that it could be a practical joke. If it wasn't a joke, could it be some sort of uh, an alliance for making a super console to beat the next generation Wii? And uh, really, it was just so at the moment, it's, it's presently just something a bit of a, a curioso. Um, is there anything you wanted to? Chip in with that. I personally don't think there's anything in it. Uh, no, it's, it's a bit strange. It's only why it's strange. The first thing I think about it, Microsoft and Nokia. So Nokia is a struggling company, and they have an alliance to do with phones with Microsoft. And Nokia is mostly a hardware company, uh, at least from Microsoft's point of view. 
Now, Sony is releasing quite a few things, you know, upcoming releases of Think Base and Android, and I think mm. Sony is pretty happy with that. Um, and Sony is a very major company. You, you know the differences in size. You're talking.